And good evening, everyone. Sam Walker from WOBX.com with a update on this developing weather situation we'll be dealing with headed into the Christmas weekend. Pretty uh, nasty situation for us here on the Outer Banks and in northeastern North Carolina, mainly from the winds and the cold temperatures. We are getting quite a bit of rain this afternoon and evening. That's going to continue into tonight. Uh, from a low pressure system that's uh, just part, uh, well, parked, but slowly uh, making its way through eastern North Carolina this evening uh, and into tomorrow. Now, what everybody's talking about, obviously, around the country is this uh, Arctic blast, this strong cold front that's going to come across the country, uh, trailing from a bomb cyclone as a big low pressure to our north up into the upper Midwest and making its way across the country, essentially over the northern half of the country. Uh, is uh, bringing all this cold air in. Uh, we, of course, avoiding a white Christmas, I mean, unfortunately, fortunately, depending on how you like to look at it. But we are going to be dealing with quite a few effects uh, here uh, in northeastern North Carolina and on the Outer Banks for the next couple of days. Uh, quite a few advisories have been posted by the National Weather Service this afternoon, and uh, those, uh, many of those will go into effect tomorrow. But we wanted to get you kind of caught up on where we stand right now, heading into Thursday evening and what to expect over the next 24 to 48 hours for the 23rd and into Christmas Eve. So uh, the situation right now, you see our live shot from uh, Kitty Hawk, courtesy of Twitty and Company, uh, where we've gotten uh, starting to see the waves kick up. We've had uh, a steady southeasterly wind over the last couple of hours. That's going to increase uh, into the 20 to 25 mile an hour range through tonight and into tomorrow. Uh, and then the shift is going to happen. But we've had uh, quite a few uh, heavy downpours with uh, some of this rain uh, that's moved through this afternoon from this low. Uh, pull up kind of a combination of uh, a radar shot for you here to give you a better idea of what we're dealing with. Uh, this kind of gives you an idea. There's a lot of heavy rain uh, here around 4 o'clock. Uh, when we recorded this down at the, around the mouth of the Noose River and the Pamlico River in the Newburn area, and then on over just making its way across the southern Pamlico Sound towards uh, Ocracoke. Uh, that's the view there. Uh, kind of a break in the heavier rain activity for uh, the northern beaches, uh, moderate to heavy rainfall on parts of Hatteras Island and back over to the Dare County mainland, the Hyde County mainland, really getting quite a bit of rain right now. And this uh, low pressure that we see right here, uh, which has been uh, right around uh, between Greenville and Goldsboro for much of the day. I'm going to go back to about 10. I'll start at 10 o'clock this morning uh, to give you an idea. Uh, this low pressure that's been moving across the state very slowly. Uh, this is where we were at at 10 o'clock. Uh, here's the shot at uh, around 1 as the rain started to make its way towards us and that low started to make its way into North Carolina. Uh, then here's the, where we're at right now, around 4 o'clock. Uh, and that's a combination of what you're seeing here of uh, the heavy, the reds and yellows and oranges and green. That's the rain. Uh, and then uh, you see those streamers. That's with the wind direction and uh, quite a bit of uh, strong wind as you get uh, out on the ocean front. And then obviously down towards the center of this thing, uh, which again is between Goldsboro and Greenville. A lot of rain, uh, wind out of the southeast, uh, which is not... All that um, common for us out of storm systems, especially in winter. Usually our winds uh, out of uh, out ahead of storms are southwest and then northeast. This one is southeaster. So we're going to have this onshore flow that's going to last into tomorrow uh, with this front. And then, uh, or ahead of the front, this is with the low. Once the front crosses uh, tomorrow afternoon and when our temperatures are going to really bottom out, uh, that's when we'll see the westerly uh, winds, and that's where we're concerned about some sound side flooding. Uh, that blew out a little bit farther than I wanted to go. I wanted to give you an idea where that front is right now. Uh, again, at 4 o'clock this afternoon, uh, you can see it out over the Midwest at this point. Uh, right uh, you know, from Michigan down into Illinois uh, and uh, Arkansas, Missouri, uh, they're seeing that's where the front is. And you can see those streams of wind that are starting to make their way out of the northwest. Uh, that's what we're going to see tomorrow. Uh, but it's going to be more of a southwesterly wind. Uh, and that is uh, and westerly and southwesterly. 
That is our concern when we, uh, with the sound side flooding possibilities that we're going to see. And then obviously when this front crosses tomorrow is where we're going to get the very, very cold temperatures uh, into the 20s uh, for the beaches down to the teens, uh, low teens for inland areas, but the wind is going to be on that. So we're going to see wind chills in the single digits. But obviously we're going to see our concern out of this is that we're going to have this long period of below freezing temperatures and obviously we don't get that a lot here for extended periods of time when we do it causes all kinds of problems so that's where uh all these advisories and such uh wind chill advisories are up something we don't ever see here uh in northeastern north carolina outer banks is seeing a wind chill advisory that's been posted for the entire uh eastern part of north carolina for friday night and into early saturday uh, but we are going to be uh, dealing with uh, some uh, possibilities of uh, that wind chill. Couple that with the strong winds out of the southwest. That could cause some sound side flooding. We've got this onshore flow right now that might cause a little bit of overwash with high tide. So a big combination of factors here. But obviously the biggest thing is we're not going to see uh, any snow out of this, unfortunately. All right. Uh, going to pull up briefing here for the National Weather Service. This was from... Uh, this morning, that's the latest from uh, our friends uh, down in Moorhead City. In fact, it's going to be easier to show it in these slides. So right now, what we're dealing with is uh, the rain. Uh, that's the big thing right now. Uh, only about an inch and a half possible. That's the highest amount. So maybe some two-inch amounts down on Lower Hatteras Island out of this. Uh, this was from the, this morning's forecast through tomorrow afternoon. Uh, that's uh, pretty much what we're going to see uh, Rain-wise, most of that rain is happening now and going to last into tomorrow afternoon when the front sweeps through and pushes that low offshore and things dry out behind it. Obviously, with that amount of rain, uh, that's going to give us the possibility of some flooding issues uh, in those poor drainage areas. Uh, this is what uh, the forecast is as far as for the uh, up uh, north of the Albemarle Sound, about an inch, you know, half inch. Uh, of rain expected uh, across uh, Curry Tuck over to Edenton through Elizabeth City, maybe a quarter inch to a half inch. Um, higher rainfall amounts as you get up on into interior sections of Virginia. Uh, the winds, we'll get to that in a second. But with the rain, obviously we're going to see this rain problems. Uh, once this rain ends tomorrow, when we get this rapid drop in temperatures, that could cause some icing issues. Uh, because of a flash freeze that could possibly happen. That's one of the concerns out of this, uh, is that possibly some flash freeze. So we could see about an inch, inch and a half, two inches through tonight uh, into tomorrow morning and in through midday. That's the kind of the storm total. But as we showed you earlier with the radar, uh, much of that rain is falling now. It's going to continue into tonight. All right, the winds. Uh, right now, the southeast are going to be running about 20 to 25 with some higher gusts, but really tomorrow is when the winds are expected to kick up. Um, giving you an idea, these are the maximum wind gusts expected for the National Weather Service from 44 out in Greenville. Once you get out towards the Pamlico Sound, we'll get up into the 50s, uh, and that looks like it's going to be about 50 along the land. Maybe offshore, it's going to get above that into uh, the 56 to 60 mile an hour range tomorrow. Uh, that's going to be behind the front. Uh, the stronger winds are expected behind the front, but don't be surprised to see a wind gust or two uh, before that. Uh, and again, that direction is going to be out of the west and southwest uh, tomorrow. Uh, let's see. We'll jump over to what uh, they've got at Wakefield uh, as we head up farther north. Uh, Elizabeth City could see gusts up to 49 uh, through Sunday. Uh, 45 is roughly what we're looking at. It's 40 to 45 on the higher gu on the gusts uh, for much of eastern North Carolina and southeastern Virginia out of this uh, high wind situation. Uh, that's going to create some pretty strong waves. Now, as you can see, we do have, and we do have a high surf advisory up uh, as of this evening. Uh, and if I go back to our live shot real quick, uh, give you an idea. We haven't seen the surf really building up yet. Uh, don't expect that. <laughs> that's probably going to be uh, not take long for it. But uh, you see there, uh, that's our live shot from Kitty Hawk again around 4, 410 this afternoon. Uh, starting to see those breakers offshore. 
uh, running about four to six feet right now. That's just going to increase because we're going to have the steady onshore flow. A real big concern, though, obviously, is when the wind shifts back out to the west tomorrow. And you'll see four foot waves in the Almoral Sound, the Pamlico Sound, even some upwards of five to six feet uh, right around the deepest parts of the Pamlico Sound. Uh, in the northern half, uh, three foot uh, sound side waves uh, for Rodanthe. Now, you know, seven to 10 feet offshore, but really it's going to be four to five. We're going to have an offshore wind. So the issues that we normally would see out of a westerly wind are going to be on the sound side, not on the ocean side so much. We still have that potential for some uh, minor overwash at high tide. Even with the southwest wind, those south-facing beaches from the point uh, in the hook uh, on down to Frisco and Hatteras Village and Ocracoke, and those normal trouble spots on the south-facing beaches could see some ocean overwash issues. But really, our concerns are about what we might see sound side out of this uh, tomorrow night. Uh, and into early Saturday uh, when the winds are expected to be at their peak uh, that could give us uh, those issues uh, with uh, the problems there. Uh, let's see here. I want to get a different map up for you. This just gives you an idea. We'll head over to uh, what they're thinking uh, you know, from Wakefield and looking up north. Pamlico, Curry Tuck Sound could see three-foot waves, uh, three, four-foot uh, possible waves uh, on the Curry Tuck Sound, especially along the eastern shore of the Cory Tuck Sound, so that's, you know, Corolla and Corova. And with the southeast wind that pushes that water up uh, and even into Duck, uh, might be some pretty big breakers there along that stretch Duck uh, right around Sunset Grill uh, where uh, the road runs right along the Sound. Uh, those breakers tomorrow could be three to four feet. So you see some breakers coming over uh, the rocks there tomorrow, possibly, when the wind shifts because the water's going to come up in the Cory Tuck Sound with the southeasterly blow, uh, and then we get to a, a westerly blow. It just pushes the water into the sound uh, on that end. Uh, let me go back because, obviously, you know, we're talking about that sound side flood threat. Let's get into this map then. This is what uh, the National Weather Service is thinking about from Duck South uh, as far as our wind situation. And this shows you two to four feet possible on the sound side of the Outer Banks from Duck South. Uh, that pretty much holds even on up into Corolla as well. Maybe uh, one to two feet, uh, but two to four feet is possible on the sound side, two to four feet above ground. That's a pretty decent amount of water it's going to be standing. So the issues that we normally see, uh, whether it's along that ocean, uh, the sound side of Duck or oh, Highway 12 may see some high water, uh, then let's head on down into Kitty Hawk uh, and uh, around uh, Moore Shore Road uh, and uh, Bomb Point. Uh, anything in Kitty Hawk Bay uh, along there may see some high water. Uh, then you get on down to Bay Drive and Killable Hills and on down to Collington, obviously, and the issues there. Uh, Manio as well, downtown Manio, you might see some standing water, it looks like, uh, out of this. It really depends on if it's going to be a southwest or if it's going to be a west. If it's a westerly, that's the worst possible case as far as the high water goes for places like downtown Manio and Collington. If it's more southwesterly, it's going to be more Juan Cheese, Manio, Rodanthe, Wave Salvo, Long Highway 12, uh, you know, standing water. We're going to see standing water and those normal trouble spots when we get a southwest blow or a west blow. It's just depending on which direction we see the wind out of tomorrow uh, that's where we're going to see, uh, and into early Christmas Eve, uh, that's where we're going to see that sound side flooding issue. You head on down south, uh, still two to four feet from Salvo on down to Hatteras Village, and maybe about one to two feet uh, more nuisance flooding down towards Ocracoke. So that's where things look like they are uh, as far as any possible flooding on the sound side. It's a normal Again, just think of it this way. Very hard southwest blow or westerly blow, that's what we're going to look at. Um, you're going to be dealing with water on those sound sides tomorrow afternoon into Saturday morning. All right, uh, let's see. As far as the cold temperatures, we get through all that. Let's throw in when that front comes through tomorrow. <clears throat> and this is what the National Weather Service is thinking as far as low temperatures Friday night into Saturday morning. 
22 Kittable Hills, 24 Red Anthe, 25 Frisco and Ocracoke. Then you head on inland uh, into the upper teens for Hyde County, the Dare County mainland, mid-teens for places like Terrell County and Washington County, and then all the way over to Greenville, even down to as low as 13 in parts of Martin County. Uh, put the wind on top of that, and it's going to feel like Friday night into Saturday morning in the low teens, the single digits over those inland areas. Uh, National Weather Service out of Wakefield, this was from their morning briefing. They have just put out their afternoon briefing. I want to see if they have changed up anything here. So give me a second here. So we'll see if they've changed anything as far as uh, the temperatures for those areas they have put together some pretty good maps here oh okay let's see if we can throw this all right we're going to throw this over here and give you an idea how well that looks all right uh let's see here uh, i'm gonna turn this graphic off real quick all right so what's the temperatures going to do this is a really good breakdown on those temperatures uh as far as what they're going to look like for us on friday so here is what the temperature forecast is for friday morning still in the 40s even up as high as the mid the low to mid 50s on the beaches uh this is uh as of 7 a.m tomorrow I'm zoom on this a little bit better so yeah you see those 57 hatteras 51 killable hills get, i can zoom down i think i can zoom down a little bit better than this yeah here we go all right so that gives you an idea in, you know, the, the round 50, 45 to 50 is what we're thinking tomorrow or um, tomorrow morning. Uh, then we're going to slide on over to, I believe this will be at 10 a.m. Yeah, noon. This is what temperature looks like at noon. Uh, we'll drop to around 50 at Hatteras, 42, Kittable Hills. We'll be down into the mid 40s, upper 30s. For inland areas, but you can see where the front is starting to come across I-95, just east of I-95 by noon tomorrow. And the temperature is already dropping into the 20s out for Raleigh, mid-teens for the Piedmont, and then to the single digits by noon in the mountains of North Carolina. All right, so I don't want to jump ahead there, 7 p.m. This should be, let's see, noon. This should be about uh, 4 p.m. Yep. Uh, 7 p.m. Where are we at here? Okay. All right. 3 p.m. 3 p.m. temperatures tomorrow. Uh, we are on the beaches down into the upper 20s. You know, right around 30, right around freezing by uh, 3 p.m. tomorrow. By 7 p.m. Uh, right at freezing. Think about all that rain we've had. Uh, so we could get that flash freezing to start after 7 o'clock tomorrow night. Uh, probably on the beaches, it'll probably be more like 8 or 9 before that really becomes a, a factor. And depending on how hard the wind blows and when the rain stops, uh, will dictate how much water is still on the roads. We're going to be dealing with some freezing issues tomorrow night as far as uh, possible flash freezing and black ice and things like that. It's down into the teens, already out by 7 o'clock tomorrow night, single in the uh, triangle, uh, the, the single digits out in the Piedmont, and then uh, below zero temperatures in the mountains of North Carolina by 7 o'clock tomorrow night. Yes, all right, that's 7. All right, uh, like I said, these these graphics just came into us, so that's uh, one reason why we're having a little issue here trying to zoom out. I didn't get a chance to save these yet and get them in a different format. So 3 o'clock, yeah, 3 o'clock we're dropping into right around freezing uh, on the north beaches. And then uh, Hatteras Island, Ocracoke, you're still in the mid-30s. And by uh, that's at 3 o'clock. And by 7 o'clock tomorrow night, it's down to freezing uh, on the beaches. So that's where things stand as far as those temperatures. That's a good, uh, I'm glad they sent us that. Gives a better idea of what to expect tomorrow. So uh, as far as the timing on the temperatures now. So we're just getting, you know, we're starting to get more of that data coming in that gives us an idea. So what do we have as far as advisories out? Uh, from the National Weather Service. So uh, I'll show this for you in just a second here. Close up these graphics. And sorry, fam. Uh, <laughs> all right, here we go. Here we're back to our PowerPoints now. Uh, let's see. So we've got quite a few um, advisories up 
uh, for the National Weather Service. This is for the uh, more pit, the Newport Moorhead City Office. Uh, this is what they're telling us right now, are showing for us. We've got uh, coastal. I'm just going to start here. Actually, you know what? I think I can do it this way and read through these, and then I'll go back to my watch. Yeah, we'll take the display off and just give you the beach shot here as we still got some daylight to work with uh, out in Kitty Hawk right now. Uh, we do have a special marine warning up. Uh, that was issued for us uh, just about 4.15 or so. High surf advisory, that continues until 6 a.m. Saturday. Coastal flood warning from 7 a.m. Friday to 9 a.m. Saturday for Hatteras Island. That's with those two to four foot way uh, water levels possible. You get over to the northern outer banks, uh, coastal flood warning uh, from 7 a.m. Friday to 9 a.m. Saturday with two to four feet on the sound side. Uh, gale warning for the coastal waters. Uh, let's see, for the sound side, the coastal waters, a gale warning for tomorrow. Those are all that's left there. I wanted to get to, they have issued this wind chill advisory. So we have a wind chill advisory. Uh, with wind chills as low as zero for some parts of eastern North Carolina from 7 p.m. Friday to 9 a.m. Saturday. Uh, and that applies for all of our air coverage area uh, with that wind chill advisory. Again, 7 o'clock Friday night to 9 a.m. Saturday. Uh, wind chills from zero to five below zero. So that's what it'll feel like. Coastal flood advisories, like I said, high surf advisory, coastal flood advisory, all that stuff. Still up. Uh, and again, our problems really are going to be tomorrow. We've got rain tonight. Wind is going to be out of the southeast. Then tomorrow, we'll see the front come across by tomorrow afternoon. Temperatures plummet. Wind shift from the east to the west. We'll start seeing that sound side flood threat tomorrow night into Saturday morning. Obviously, the wind chills. Uh, a couple things uh, to pass along to you as far as what we're hearing from our local government officials. Uh, update from uh, Drew at uh, uh, Drew Pearson, who's the Dare County Emergency Management Director, uh, pointing out that uh, they are advising uh, that the rental companies, uh, those who have property uh, here on the Outer Banks, uh, you know, the rental companies contact owners just to give them an idea, reach their customers, whether it's property owners, but also those who are renting, that, uh, you know, with Christmas weekend, or bring weather impacts that visitors may not have been expecting uh, you know, whether it's the winds, the sound side flooding, cold temperatures, uh, that, those are a couple of things. Check your heating systems and pipes for insulation. They help avoid impacts as temperatures drop. Uh, make sure you go out and take all your water hoses and take them off the spigots. I need to go do that myself before it gets dark, uh, just while I'm thinking about it. Uh, also, uh, make sure you've got, uh, you know, carry some of those extra blankets with you in the car just in case something happens if you have to be out tomorrow night or early Saturday uh, with these cold temperatures. Make sure you got some of that stuff with you just in case if you're making travel tomorrow night and into Saturday morning because these low wind chills and the low temperatures we're going to see uh, through tomorrow. Uh, Town of Manio, uh, we got an email from them earlier, uh, actually yesterday, that had good information as far as with the coastal flooding threat. Uh, with those west winds expected to begin around midday and may last through midnight on Sunday, uh, the moderate and moderate flooding may occur due to those west winds. Remember, if you encounter flood around waters, turn around, don't drown. The town of Mania does have an ordinance that prohibits driving through flood waters. They'll have their signs up and the barricades up. Uh, make sure you uh, protect yourself and your property. Move vehicles out of flood-prone areas. Secure your trash cans and other items. Uh, all good tips there for everybody. But if you do... And Manio, of course, those folks know where to put the cars when we start getting this west wind threat uh, for the possibility of flooding, but at the same time, be ready for that. Again, if you do have plans, try not to drive through the water. You know, folks that go to Collington back and forth are used to it. But again, you know, lower your speed. Remember, that's not fresh water. That is a brackish water out there. Can do some damage to your vehicle if you start plowing through it too fast. You know, drive slow. Uh, be mindful of your neighbors and not be pushing water into their businesses and houses. Uh, whether it's in Mania or in uh, Collington, wherever it is, uh, down on Hatteras Island as well. We're going to see this flooding issue. Again, it's expected tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night, into Saturday morning. Throw the freezing temperatures on top of that. So we're going to have sound side water on the roads in a lot of spots. And water, you know, the temperatures are going to be down to freezing. We could see some freezing of that. So just keep that in mind as well. So 
That's the latest. We'll keep you up to date right here at WOBX.com with uh, the updates from the National Weather Service. Uh, we'll uh, probably uh, get you at least another video on Friday once we get into uh, the midday and the afternoon once this front comes through and we start seeing things uh, pick up as far as that goes. We've got all those live shots uh, that you can find at WOBX.com. Of course, the one that you're looking at right now from uh, Kitty Hawk. You can also uh, pull up the one downtown Manio. Uh, we've got a live camera from there on YouTube. Those both are streaming on YouTube if you want to pull them up and check them out. Uh, links to all the NCDOT cameras. It'll show you shots from uh, various spots. Uh, the cameras that are working, Merlo Beach, those places like that, even though Merlo Beach isn't a problem anymore because it's bypassed. Uh, but there is a camera now at the P. Island Visitor Center where the big problem is on Highway 12 now with overwash. So all that stuff you find at WOBX.com. Have yourself a great Thursday, everyone. I'm Sam Walker.